In this video, I will show you how to do propensity score matching in R. Before you view it, please make sure that you have watched my propensity score matching video and propensity score example video. I have opened up here the R program in R Studio and I have already executed the program here. And you can download the program as well as the data from my website and follow along. So this would be an example on how to do propensity score models and treatment evaluation. So if we look at the data, this would be the treatment variable, which is a 0, 1, whether or not the person participated in a treatment program. Age, education, and whether or not a person is married it are the independent variables on which we will match and then real earnings for 78 this is the outcome variable so based on whether or not people receive treatment we want to know is there has this treatment have had any effect on their real earnings afterward we would also do a difference in differences model and for that model, we would be using this variable here, real earnings difference, which is the difference before and after the program. So let's go back to the program. And here's how these two, these variables are defined. Treat would be our treatment variable. Then real earnings 78 would be our outcome variable, the one that we want to compare. And the three independent variable, age, education, and married, there with C bind, we're putting them into X. And I will use in one of the graphs later on the age variable, which here I'm calling variable one. For the difference in differences model, you can use Y, um, which would be the real earnings difference that that would be the uh, deep the outcome variable and so you can just remove this sign and rerun the program for for the difference in differences model so this is how the variables are defined and you could just change the treatment the outcome and the um, independent variables and put one of these in here and the program should be running for you so before you continue, also make sure that you have installed the packages matching and R bounds, and then you have put them into the library so that we can use them. Um, we can then calculate the script statistics by using the summary command. And here are some of the descriptive statistics. We have 7% of our sample have received treatment. For them, treat would be equal to 1. We have the average earnings here are $20,502. And we have for age, education, and married, these are the, um, the uh, averages that we have. The next thing to do is calculate uh, or estimate the propensity score model. And this is a simple uh, probit model in this case. And we would use the GLM procedure here and here we would put treatment as the dependent variable that zero one variable of whether or not you're in the treated or the control group and x would be our independent variable for family we would have binomial so this would be the probit model and then data would be my data and then we would summarize the results so th these are the results that we have here for the propensity score model. And you could go ahead and interpret these in the normal way, the way we interpret public model results. So people that have higher age, higher education, and are married, they're less likely to be in the treated group. And this is what we can get from this estimation. The purpose of this propensity score model here is not actually to look at these results but to calculate the propensity scores or these are the predicted probabilities from this model that we will use later on to match on these variable uh, on this propensity score so that's the goal of this propensity score model here these are the predicted probabilities so now once we calculate those predicted probabilities for the treated and the control group 
then each of the treated observations gets a, gets a match from the controlled group and then we can compare the average treatment effect on the treated and this would be you have to specify phi y and I, I because I use the same notation this is the y variable for me right here treatment would be treatment that same variable that we used here and for x we would be using the fitted values from this earlier result here okay and then we can use summary for for this matches and these are the summaries that we have here so we would have the, the difference here that's the estimate of six thousand four hundred and eighty seven dollars so we can say that if individuals have participated in the program their earnings are six thousand four hundred and eighty seven dollars less than if they didn't participate in the training program so that's not a very good result and you can see that it's statistically significant and you can see this is the number of treated observations 185 and this is the total number of observations that we had here so here I have also commented out a few more models that we can do uh, and for the most part if you skip some of these we would get the defaults up here so you could put estimate ATT average treatment on the treated or average treatment effect here so this is the correct way to do it and this is like a t-test to do m equals 1 me meaning that each controlled observation would be used once and this is how to resolve ties and whether or not to use replacement uh, when you uh, when you're looking for matches so these are some of the default commands that we have there the next thing that we can do is check the balancing property and we can accomplish this by using match balance and then you use treated on the X and then you have the results from RR1 that we had here before number of bootstraps is zero or you can increase that number and data would be equal my data and here we can look at the uh, QQ plot and here we would have variable one remember that I defined this as age from those the controlled and the treated observations and then we would plot this uh, on the um, uh, on a graph and here I have already executed the program and I have the result here so we would have variable one this is age for the control and the treated observations and this is like a perfect uh, perfect match here so if we see that uh, we have like treated observation that has a certain age here we would be using from the control we would be using age from here to here so I'm looking at the scale probably one year difference and we see that our our um, matches aren't as good as we get older people in the sample so we have like one person here that's 43 years old but we have these as matches for them so quite a big like up to 10 years of difference as matches so we want those to be as close as possible to the 45 degree line in here and the next uh, few things that uh, we can do is um, also looking at the balancing property here which we, we didn't do but um, okay so we can see this is the mean before say for the age variable this is the mean age before matching and this is the mean age for the control group before matching so there's a pretty big difference so young people younger people got treated so after matching this this would be the same of course because we're interested in the treated group we'll keep all of them but look at the control group we only kept people that now are a lot closer in age than before so that's a good thing we found really really good matches for them and same thing here 
um, for education, this is for treated, and this is for the control group. And now after matching, you see how like that number from 12 got down to 10, so it's a lot closer to, uh, to the 1, and so on. Okay, and then I showed you the graph. Um, so next thing to do here is we can also do uh, a couple more things, but um, I copied these from like different um, uh, different codes that I compiled here. Uh, but we can also use gen uh, match, and we can put the treatment x variable balance matrix x population size ten. We can then put match with um, with different uh, weight matrix that you're you're coming you're taking right here from gen one and then we can do match balance and then uh, we could have treatment on x data my data you're getting the results from here and bootstraps equals zero so this is supposedly um, a good way for using um, genetic matching and you can also look at some of the results here that we have for different variables. So the final thing here to do is look at this genetic matching which is supposedly a better matching. And uh, you can look at the match balance here which is the same command as we had before. And this will be the results that you have before and after matching. And the final thing that you can do here is some sensitivity tests. And what you need to know here is gamma is the odds of differential assignment to treatment due to unobserved factors. So what we are varying here is what if um, some unobserved factors are, are also influencing the assignment to treatment. And here we would like to know how that would affect the estimates. So we're using these commands here and we're using some of the previous results that we have generated up here. And if you look at the value of the estimate was this number here and we would like to know how that would change as gamma changes. And these differences here show the sensitivity of the estimates. And you can see as gamma increases then you would have a, a lot wider range for the lower and the upper bound on these. So this is all I had on propensity score matching in R. Thank you for watching.